Hey guys, welcome back to Do It Live, and yes, third video in this series. I know I'm wearing the same shirt, I'll go change in a second, because we're going to run down and take a look at my new creation, which is a crazy water-cooled PC in the size of a shoebox. So, as you guys know, I love making home theater PCs, or computers that are supposed to meld in with your home theater setup. I love that idea. I love the idea of small computers and technology has gone so far that we can pack so much power into these small mini PCs. If you guys want to see the last time I made a console size PC, click up in the eye over here. Oh wait, hold on. It's gonna be here. It's gonna be up there. I'm getting it right this time guys. So check the eye up here for the console size PC that's 4K capable and supposed to match, in my opinion, the PS4 Pro. But what we're doing today is we're gonna take a whole bunch of parts and we're gonna shove it into something like a shoebox, but not just any any parts. We're gonna water cool it, an all-in-one cooler, a Corsair cooler. We're gonna get this thing as cool as possible in that small little frame, but we're gonna try to squeeze as much power as we can fit in it and saving the most amount of money as well. You'll be surprised how much it costs me to put together this machine. So let's run down to the lab. I'm gonna change my shirt and let's go take a look. So before we get to building, let's look at the parts we're gonna use a little bit more in depth for this build. Like I mentioned, it's gonna be a Core i7 6700K, very similar to um, that $800 PC I built earlier. However, we're gonna water cool this and we're gonna put it in a mini ITX chassis. So we have the 6700K right here. I'm gonna use the same Evo Potenza um, DDR4 memory there. And this is the, the star, the Z170 Stinger. Um, and yes, so it will fit in this case that I'm about to show you, it's a mini ITX motherboard, so that'll be great. That's that there. Obviously, we're gonna make sure this is as strong as possible, so to pair with the 6700K, we're gonna go with one of our GTX 1080s. And this will be pretty much my HTPC to go uh, with my 4K TV for quite some time. I know I had the console killer. If you guys didn't see that video yet, it's right up here. Click the card right up there to see how that performs. It performs well, however, um, I don't want to be upgrading anymore, so I have this setup ready. And I want to water cool this, like I mentioned, with an H75 that I have here. H75, H75i, something like that. Uh, so we're going to water cool it. We're going to do some overclocking in the future, uh, so I don't want to haul myself back there. The 4590 is, or 4570, I believe, um, is a locked processor so unfortunately no more cranking out of that but it's still good and that's gonna go to someone who can use it so it's gonna be great and again sorry the real the real 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 star of the show is the fractal design core 500 mini ITX case so it is a little bit bigger in volume compared to the Fractal Design Node 202. However, this can fit water cooling no problem and extra fans and uh, it should be good for our build. So let's get to building. So, after changing power supplies and obtaining an optical drive, I was ready to pop this GTX 1080 in here instead of the 1060 that I had upon trying to complete it originally because my power supply was way too big. This is the old power supply right here. It, I think I shaved about 2 centimeters and that allowed the 1080 to fit. You can see it's in there, water cooling's in there, now I need to test it and make sure it is solid, sorry for the random zoom. If you guys really want to see that 1080. 
but man, the cable managing, management in this is probably really, really ugly, but at least the fans are clear, for the most part, I believe. And, uh, oh my god, it is, it's been crazy trying to work in this thing. I don't even know why I do this myself, but we want performance, we want water cooling, we want GTX 1080. So let's take the first thing. Okay, so this is one of the things I wanted to showcase, which was uh, Wii U emulator running on my water-cooled box. Because the hardware is strong enough, we're actually emulating a Wii U game I own called Super Mario 3D Land, and I'll let you take a look at the gameplay in a second. But what I find that's really cool about it is I'm actually playing this at 4K. This is not 1080p as you're seeing on the screen. It's being recorded at 4K, played at 4K, and I'm actually uh, down sampling it to 1080p so you can watch it on the channel. But I'm rendering this at 4K. It looks beautiful, even better than on the original Wii U, running at a 60 FPS using an emulator, which I can get into at another video. But this is one of the main reasons why I wanted to uh, make this setup is so that I can emulate some of these other consoles at 4K. So enjoy the rest of the footage and uh, we'll get to the next simulator. So the next emulator I want to show off is PlayStation 2. Uh, so this is a game called Burnout Revenge and obviously don't drive like this in real life folks. It's just for the game, the purpose is to crash a bunch of stuff. But right now I'm playing this rendered at 4K instead of the regular 480i or 4 And uh, besides the backgrounds there are some tweaks that I have to do. But otherwise it's running fairly smoothly around 60fps at 4K and I gotta say even the old game like this from 2004-2005 looks great on my water cooled box emulator so this is just to show off what uh, a setup like this can do but again please don't drive like this in real life your car will not survive this many crashes in a row What do you guys think? I know, sorry, I'm really excited about it. This is going to be my console size PC now. My console size PC that I made and that I made a few months ago. I'm going to have to sell that. I know you can't water cool on that thing. The temperatures just aren't low enough for me because I want to be able to overclock and maximize the potential out of the chip that I put in there. So unfortunately, the console size PC has to go and that new one is going to take its place. I haven't found a name for it. You'll probably see it in the thumbnail or something like that. We'll figure it out. But what do you guys think of that performance? That is true 4K capability in a shoebox. It's water cooled. The temps are crazy cool. About like 20 something idle. It's really not even loud. That's what boggles me so much is that I have like two or three fans in there. It's cool, it's quiet. And it looks good in my home theater setup, even though it doesn't even fit that well. It's kind of funky. But what I actually put this together for is to play PS2 games at 4K 
at 4K resolution. Now you guys are probably thinking, wow, you're crazy, why would you do that? Well, I love PS2 games. I've recently started collecting them, which I'll do a video on my new collection and how much I got in one month and how much it's worth, how much I paid, but we'll get to that video another time. It's cool. So emulators for PS2 have gotten so good that you can render at a higher resolution than it's originally meant for which by the way is for those old tube TVs yes 480i excuse me is what they're meant to play it at and come on I'm not gonna play a PlayStation 2 game at 480i if I can play it at 4k resolution I'm gonna do that why not 4k resolution and honestly it's surprising that it it looks pretty good it's because it's rendering the quality and the textures at 4K. Of course, the textures are not up to date. So it doesn't look the best. It's not as good as if you played a AAA title at 4K. But it's better than playing a PS2 game at 480p on a, on a 1080p monitor that's like 40-something inches. It looks stretched out. It looks blurry. It's not that nice. But when you up-render it, it's really nice. So... Also, of course, the AAA titles we ran ran well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, if you enjoy, hit that like button and get subscribed as I'm doing more and more videos more consistently, hopefully, after the surgery. But I'm making all these videos as fast as I can to make sure you guys have something to watch in the meantime. I hope you guys come back and, of course, don't forget to do it live.